So the first thing that we need to do for making our Bakewell tart is we need to make some sweet short crust pastry. So the first thing that we're going to do to make our pastry is take some plain flour and put 100 grams of that straight into our large glass bowl. So 100 grams of flour into your bowl. Perfect. Then into that, we're going to add 50 grams of margarine. Now I have weighed this margarine already and I've cut it up into small cubes because that's going to make it much easier for when we are rubbing our margarine into our flour. So I'm adding the margarine directly into the flour and we're going to use our hands to rub this in. So you want to use the rubbing in motion, which is where you slide your thumbs across your fingertips and back again. As you do that motion, you pick up the flour and your margarine and you're rubbing in the flour and margarine until we have fine breadcrumbs and no big lumps left. When you're doing this, it's really important to make sure that your hands are cold and that your margarine is cold. So don't take it out of the fridge too long before you need it. So we're rubbing this in, it does take a few minutes to do. Repeating that motion of picking it up, rubbing it across our fingertips and dropping it back down. It should look like this. See, it's a fine breadcrumb texture and there's no big lumps in it. If you give your bowl a shake, any big lumps will rise to the top and you can just finish rubbing them in. Now that we have rubbed our flour and margarine in, the next thing that we are going to do is add 25 grams of sugar. The next stage of making our pastry is adding our water. Now when we're adding our water, we want to make sure we're using really cold water. I'm going to use my measuring spoons to add the water, but you could use a tablespoon if you don't have a set of measuring spoons. And we're going to use a butter knife to mix the water in. I'm going to add one 15 ml spoon of water to start off with. We want to add our water really gradually because we can always add in extra water but we're not going to be able to take it back out. So using your knife and you're really cutting through that mixture, make sure you get right round the outside of your bowl and mix it all in together. Another spoonful going in. Now you can see after two spoonfuls that that is starting to come together. I can tell because I've got quite a lot of loose crumbs at the bottom of it that I need another little bit of water, but I'm not going to need very much more. So I'm just going to use just half a spoonful. Mix that all through. And now that it is mostly coming together, I'm going to scrape my knife off, put that over by my side. And then I'm going to use my hands just to really carefully and gently knead the pastry and bring it all together. When you take your pastry out of the bowl, if you have it the perfect consistency, your bowl should have no crumbs left in it. So we're going to pop the pastry down on the work surface. Next thing we need to do is get a sheet of cling film and we're just going to wrap that pastry up in your cling film, making sure that no air can get in. So my pastry has been in the fridge resting for about 30 minutes. So now I'm going to unravel it from the cling film, place it on the countertop. I'm just going to pop my cling film straight into the bin. And then I'm going to take a sprinkling of plain flour and pop some down on the work surface and some onto the rolling pin that I'm going to be using. The next stage that we want to do here is roll our pastry out to the shape of our flan ring. If you don't have a flan ring, you could use um, something like a cake tin and um, would work just the same. Um, even if it does have a bottom on it, that would be totally fine. So you are rolling out to just about the size, just a little bit bigger than the size of your flan ring. If we want to end up with a circle when we're rolling out pastry, we need to start with a circle. So I'm going to lightly shape it using my hands. I need to weigh any big cracks on the surface and then I'm going to take my rolling pin and roll forwards backwards 
and then to stop it sticking and to keep it even I'm going to pick the pastry up off the surface and quarter turn it so we're going forwards backwards and quarter turning it again if it sticks like that take a little bit of flour and roll it on put it onto your roll pin so we're going forwards and backwards picking it up and turning it, measure it using my flan ring and I can see that it is just a bit bigger than the flan ring so that's going to give me enough coverage for up the sides so the next part we're going to do is we are going to lift our pastry using a rolling pin and place it into and line our flan ring so I'm folding the pastry over my rolling pin picking it up holding my flan ring with one hand and then really lightly placing my pastry over the top of it then going to take the pastry and let it lift it up bit by bit and let it fall down into my flan ring and you just want to use this flat bit of your finger and press it really gently into the corners of your flan ring so once I'm happy with that I'm going to leave it to rest again for maybe five or ten minutes so my pastry has been resting for about five minutes now and the next thing I'm going to do is trim the flan ring. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. I'm going to do it the way that I find easiest. Um, you can also do it using a knife but I'm going to use my rolling pin. And I'm simply just going to take the rolling pin and roll it across the top of my flan ring and peel away. The excess. The next thing I'm going to no uh, point out is that you'll notice in the inside of my flan ring some areas of it are looking just a little bit thin. So what I'm going to do is take um, a little piece of my excess pastry and dip my finger in some cold water and I'm just going to do a little bit of patchwork on the inside of it to make sure that there's no gaps that any filling could fall through. So the next thing that we need to do is bake our pastry case blind. To do this, you're going to need a piece of greaseproof paper. Um, I'm going to use rice, you can use baking beans, you could use lentils, you could use pasta. Um, the work. First thing you want to do, take your piece of greaseproof paper and place it carefully on top of your pastry case. Using my hands just to mold it into the shape of the pastry case but I'm not pressing it right down into it we don't want the paper to be stuck to it or to indent the pastry next I'm just going to take a handful of rice and fill the pastry case Place your paper in and rice in you can see that there and then I'm going to pop that into my oven so while my pastry case is baking blind in the oven for 15 minutes I am going to prepare the filling for my Bakewell tart. So to do this, we are going to need 50 grams of sugar. A bowl on the scales. 50 grams of sugar into my bowl. And to that, I'm adding 50 grams of margarine. We're going to cream the margarine and sugar and this is going to give us a nice light and airy sponge. So we're using the back of a wooden spoon against the side of our bowl. It's really good if you take your margarine out of the fridge a little while before you need to use it for this part and to make it nice and soft like mine is just now. So creaming it together until it all comes together this nice light and fluffy texture that you can see here. The next thing we are going to do is add in 50 grams of self-raising flour this time. So 50 grams of flour going directly into my bowl with my margarine and sugar and then I'm going to crack an egg straight into the bowl as it And next thing I'm going to do is beat my margarine, sugar, flour and egg all together until you get this consistency here which is called a soft dropping consistency because it falls off the spoon really easily without you having to give your spoon a shake. Into that I'm also going to add 2.5 mils of my almond extract. If you don't have measuring spoons you could use the cap of the almond extract. Um, and that would give you about 2.5 mils. 
My pastry has been baking blind for about 15 minutes, so I'm going to lift off the greaseproof paper and rice. And we can see that it has gone round the outside a nice golden brown colour and it's nice and dry looking across the top. Now my pastry has shrunk slightly, I could have prevented that by letting it rest for a little bit longer but it's still going to be fine to carry on with. Next stage is we are going to put some jam into the base. Okay, so I tend to use a teaspoon to do this. Um, just a, about what would probably be about a 10ml spoon of jam into the bottom of the pastry case and I'm just using my spoon to spread that so we've got a nice thin layer of jam all over the bottom of the case. Right into the edges and make sure it's all over the middle. And once I've done that I'm going to add my cake mix into the pastry case as well. So pouring that in just on top of my jam, using my wooden spoon to make sure that I really scrape around the outside. I'm going to put that back in the oven now to bake for about 15 minutes and then I'll taste it for readiness. So I have removed my bake well tart from the oven and I'm going to carry out my test for readiness now. We can see by looking at the bake well tart that it's a nice golden brown colour. Um, and we are going to test it ready by pressing our finger lightly on the top of it and checking if it springs back up. If your um, sponge springs back up, then that is it ready. So I'm just using a fish slice to really gently slide underneath my bakewell tart and place that onto the cooling rack. So the final stage of making our Bakewell tart is we are going to make up some icing using just some icing sugar and water. I always mix with a knife when I'm making icing sugar to make sure that we don't get any lumps in it. I've got about 100 grams of icing sugar in my bowl already and I'm just going to add one teaspoon of water and give it a good mix. And then add more water as I need it until I get the correct consistency. So once I have a nice thick consistency of my icing, I'm going to spread that on the Bakewell tart. Make sure before you spread this on that your Bakewell tart is completely cool, otherwise your icing will run down the sides of it. So I'm just going to take some of my icing to start with and pop it on and just really gently spread it out. Need a little bit more. So I'm just going to do that again until I'm happy with the coverage of icing on the Bakewell tart. You can use either a knife or a spoon to spread your icing. Um, if your ice is nice and thick though, it shouldn't run down the sides. And there we have it. That is your Bakewell tart complete.